Hi, good evening everyone. I will just try to wrap it up as fast as possible. So, uh, I am working with a company called eHealth Point. Uh, we are a for-profit organization working in the rural areas to provide a preventive and curative health care. Uh, so I will just brief, uh, briefly tell you that what exactly we are doing. Uh, there is a basic lack of health care structure in India as uh, it's the, uh, the total physician to population ratio is 1 to 1700. This is the average ratio which is much worse in uh, rural areas. <laughs> then in the rural areas there is a lot of unlicensed quacks, RMPs, there is dearth of uh, uh, diagnostics in the pharmacy facilities. Yeah. <coughs> and there are more than 200,000 communities which are waiting for uh, good quality waters across India and globally. So this is our basic uh, model. So we have uh, an e-health point, so which provides a health care in the form of primary uh, health care. And recently we have introduced more maternal and chronic uh, disease-based uh, health care. We provide telemedicine, we provide camp-based uh, health care, and uh, then we provide on-site diagnostics. And uh, we have a water treatment plant, a RO plant, which, which basically caters to that particular village on a monthly subscription basis. And then we have pharmacy retail which is uh, outsourced, which basically sells products which are pharmaceuticals and non-pharmaceuticals. And then we have a last mile program in which we have a village health worker, which is usually from the same village, has a community can connect and goes goes out to the community and uh, speaks to them about the health awareness and health education aspect. This is these are a few pictures of our uh, uh, centers. So we have point of care devices and online telemedicine consultation and ML devices. Uh, this is the waiting area. Uh, we have uh, more than 60 percent of our clients with the women and children who usually don't uh, avail the health facilities that are available in the town. Uh, then we provide them good quality generic medicines branded uh, and uh, at a very good uh, price. The discount goes up to 50 to 70 percent for the drug. This is the lab. We have a range of around 70 diagnostic tests which uh, we perform in our laboratory. This is how they uh, collect the water. Uh, it's approximately $1.5 which comes up to 75 to 80 rupees per month. So it's basically that they subscribe with us for 80 rupees a month and we provide them 20 liters of water every day. So people come to our center and collect 20 liters of water every day. <coughs> in a specific this format of can which we provide them. And those who are not able to come and collect the water from the center can actually, uh, we can deliver uh, the cans and the water to their home. So there is an extra cost for that, but we have that facility also. As you see, there are more male now taking water from our center. <coughs> These are basically drivers for our, uh, our business model, in which we are giving them the quality, the affordability, and the access. And Behavior change, I would say, and the community coordination are the most important keys in our business. Most important keys for the success of our business. As I told you last point program, uh, the basic idea is to uh, make the community aware of what kind of health problems are there, what what the exactly they require to do, educate them on health issues. Uh, then we do the disease surveillance in that area, and we do a sort of MIS training with the public health. These are the value prop, uh, propositions. We basically target low income and rural communities. There is a high synergy of healthcare and water. Uh, we are leveraging technology. We basically operate on telemedicine with a multi service platform offering pharmacy and diagnostics. Then uh, we have a PPP model in which the whole center has a, uh, I mean, the capex cost is shared between us and the government is usually 50%. Uh, then there is obviously a social and financial return for the stakeholders. Uh, we have seen a lot of uh, change in the uh, employment opportunities. Most of our field staff is basically from the nearby villages or from that villages. And so all our uh, field staff are working in the health point like lab technician or nurses or uh, field workers. They are very happy with our uh, employment opportunities and most of them have left their previous jobs and are with us for the last three years. We are in existence for three years and they are there with us for the last three years. And uh, we are contributing the, to the MDG goals 4, 5, 6, 7, which includes mother health, child health, uh, reducing the disease burden, and providing safe drinking water. So these are the three main stakeholders in our uh, 
business model. One is a client, second is a community, and third is a local government. So these are the basic uh, areas in which they are benefited. Like uh, for the customer, they get safe drinking water. They uh, save a lot of money on their primary health care issues. Uh, they have increased productivity. Then for the local community, they, we have a vaccination program, and uh, they get a localized uh, employment. The productivity and health itself increases. For the government, it basically reduces the workload of the primary health care centers or the community health care centers. And it's, uh, it's contributing to the state goals and objectives of the public health. So what has worked so far? Uh, we have a very high turnaround in making units operational. Uh, people are trusting our quality and services. We have achieved a good operational efficiency and, and the doctor connect with the patient is good. As I told you, there is a very low attrition in the field staff and there are very good margins in uh, water and diagnostic sector. And, uh, we are basically not perceived as a private company, we are more perceived as a public sector collaborator. Uh, these are the expectations which, I mean, these are the results which actually exceeded our expectations that we have a lot of uh, women clients and uh, the user base of water in the areas where we are already have competition is actually much more than what we expected because people uh, relate to e, e health point water, people relate to the brand and the quality of water which we provide. So we have started, initially we started with the DPP model in rural areas only, but now we have started the DPP model in very urban areas also. We have raised the bar of quality, we check our for, uh, the water parameters every month. Uh, then uh, the availability of low cost drugs is health point. And obviously with this response, the public sector has been very good. They have always been supporting us with all the permissions and grants required. <coughs> the challenge is unit level profitability for healthcare itself is a challenge as of now. Uh, attracting uh, good talent for rural social enterprise, it's a very difficult challenge. Then uh, attracting doctors, especially uh, uh, the specialist doctors for that sector is again a difficult task. But we have started working on a home uh, consultation in which the, uh, the doctor can actually sit remotely in wherever he is practicing and do a home consultation through uh, video conferencing. And then the capex is increasing. Uh, the quacks, uh, they have initially it was, uh, I mean, we were, we were facing a lot of competition from the quacks, but now we have built our own brand and quacks have actually started uh, relying our own, our, on our own brand. And they have started referring patients for the diagnostics and pharmacy uh, purposes to our center. Then obviously free schemes from the public sector, like recently we launched the antenatal scheme, in which the public sector is actually providing not free, they are paying incentives to the patient for getting the delivery done. And at the same time we are charging the patients for uh, antenatal services. So that's a challenge again. Then uh, <coughs> there is a low cost uh, competition from the unorganized sector, mainly quacks. There is very low investment in communication and uh, community mobilization. Uh, and most importantly, positioning and perception in, uh, in our services in case of emergencies, the birthing facilities or speciality consultation. We are still seen as primary uh, healthcare providers. Then this is the impact study which was done by Andrew and Bonnie Weiss through SIGA and UC Berkeley. So we have a couple of research projects with international universities which we are doing right now. So which basically say that all this we have done which I have already told that uh, we are creating access to uh, 1 million low income people and as I told we are contributing to the MDG goal of 567. These are the metrics of 2011-12. We have uh, provided water access to more than 500,000 people, uh, healthcare access to 200,000 people and we have created 250 plus jobs in uh, directly. The revenue for 2011-12 uh, was 25 million uh, Indian rupees. We are still facing loss in that. And it's basically majorly because of the healthcare part of it. The water business is, uh, is, is profitable, profitable in itself. And, and this is the strategy we are providing consultation, diagnostic and pharmacy. These are the initial three things which we started with apart from the safe drinking water. Uh, consultation is price traffic but as per uh, the consultation we are charging only 30 rupees for the consultation. So it is not profitable, but obviously price traffic and uh, uh, <coughs> the diagnostics have a very good margin. The pharmacy is outsourced, so we get a rental uh, revenue from there. 
then we have started the introducing new services like vaccination and camps, which have a very modest margin, uh, reasonable, uh, uh, modest revenue and reasonable margin. So these are the recently launched projects and pilots which we did in Punjab. We screened more than 2,000 school children, found uh, that 9 plus children were anemic. We initiated a paid vaccination program for hepatitis B for adults. And then we have recently introduced more vaccination in this uh, program. And then we did a uh, diabetes screening for more than 25 years of people and then 18% new diabetics were uh, diagnosed. Antenatal services we have launched. In this uh, service we are basically providing the antenatal care and we are providing them uh, with a home based care. So we have a uh, M Health uh, platform, a tablet attached to 5 to 6 different diagnostic, uh, 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 diagnostic tests which we can actually go to the door-to-door uh, -to, -door to the patient and do the, all these tests which are usually required on monthly or bi-monthly basis in the antenatal period. I'll show you a picture of that uh, kit. Then chronic care management, as I told you, we are targeting uh, diabetes and hypertension. So we are providing them a uh, uh, disease-based management with a package-based uh, treatment. So that they have a package for the treatment in which we will do all the tests required in that period which is recommended by uh, the medical fraternity and uh, we will provide them the treatment according to the disease uh, category they have. Recently we have, uh, we have been a lot of this uh, project uh, by Sina. We have got a grant for $2,000. Uh, so this is again mobile based screening for diabetes and hypertension and uh, it's, it's mainly about com community mobilization and awareness. And uh, similarly we have done a similar project uh, with a leading healthcare company in India and uh, it's basically focused on diabetes, but it's not only on screening, it's like uh, providing them the uh, complete continuum solution approach uh, with the package D. <coughs> and these are the next uh, few steps which we might uh, take in a healthcare business. So we have, we have operationally, we have partnered with uh, different people and then specialists telling us, as I told you, we have started a home health translation. Then, uh, we are collaborating with different uh, providers in that region with different hospitals for the uh, reference. And we are in incorporating more of uh, IT solution in our system to upgrade the systems and process. <coughs> this is basically uh, the picture at the lower uh, right end. That's the kit which we use for the antenatal uh, project. So it has a tablet which is attached to a uh, small white box which you can see that's called Swasti Slate. Uh, it is developed by PHFI and uh, so we are basically, the uh, diagnostics uh, which are attached to it are uh, blood pressure, sugar, uh, temperature, ECG, the TDS and the pulse oximeter. So we can pretty much take all the basic uh, parameters which, which are required on a regular basis and this is automatically, once you do the test, it is automatically uh, Uploaded on the server uh, in the patient's mobile. <coughs> so we don't have to manually enter anything in that. And, uh, <coughs> then why water and health together? So I just thought I'll put a couple of slides on that. So waterborne diseases, this is what uh, the WHO report says that more than 4.1% of the total visibility years uh, are because of waterborne diseases. And we are losing annual losses around 82 million uh, DALI. Then, uh, Total, it's about uh, 3.4 million human deaths annually uh, due to waterborne diseases. 88 percent of that uh, of the waterborne diseases is attributable to unsafe water supply, sanitation, and hygiene. Uh, in developing countries, it causes more than four fifths of the illnesses, and globally, the second leading cause of the death in children below five years. The first leading cause is the respiratory disorders, and this is a vicious cycle of uh, waterborne diseases. So. You have malnutrition, you have lack of vaccination, you have lack of safe drinking water. Start with that, you are more susceptible to waterborne diseases. <coughs> then you have lack of quality medicines. Because of that, you, uh, you have the response to the treatment is very poor. <coughs> this causes disability, loss of income, uh, loss of productivity, and you are back again to the malnutrition level. So e-health point is basically targeting two aspects of the species cycle. One is providing them the uh, nutritional products vaccination and safe drinking water and another one is providing them with the quality medicines. So I think the all day we have been talking about the solutions which should be done and hopefully we are, we are on the right track. There are a lot, lot of things to be learned on the way. But uh, 
I think we can find a good sustainable solution for providing healthcare and uh, in the rural area. That's all. Thank you. Sir, you mentioned this uh, generic medicine. Uh, generic medicine. Yes. Uh, we get the more discount. So is there isn't different between the branded medicine quality and generic medicine quality. Not really. I mean, not really. It's only the regulation part says that it's, it has to be a very, uh, the regulation is very strict for the branded medicine. Not so strict, but the efficacy part it says it's similar. In fact, even US is coming this way and they're, uh, they're getting a lot of uh, genetic medicines from India. The Indian pharmaceutical industry has boomed up a lot because of this. The efficacy part is, I mean, can you believe it? Yeah, we, 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 we uh, prescribe genetic I might take genetic medicine. Sometimes the paracetamol, if you take it, the genetic no, medicine works better than paracetamol. No, that okay. is possible. What I am saying is that uh, the generic medicine, there are a lot of companies that are making. There are more than 1,000 companies that are making paracetamols in India. So only good branded companies like Ciplar and Baxi or some, something like that or Abbott, they have their own generic brands. So we basically uh, get generic medicine from these kind of companies. We are not getting it from somebody who is, you know, Manufacturing it in Himachal without any brand or something. Like that. So you find simpler the generic one which is making this. Yes, yes. Right. So you get a discount of around 50 to 70 percent, and we pass on most of the discount to the patient. Vaccination, when you say that, um, including the pregnant and the shared vaccination also, because the government already has the vaccination in place. We started the, actually, we started as a partner with government to provide the free vaccine, which is part of the uh, immunization mm -hmm. program. But then, uh, in, after the initial uh, stages, the government started having some problems with that. And uh, so they just uh, discontinued the free vaccination part. So then we are providing them the vaccinations which are, I mean, uh, the free vaccines also we provide them, but usually the customer flow for that is very less because we, we ask so them to pay for that. So what I mean to say that if ANM is already doing the vaccination on CV, so ANM is providing only tetanus, right? So in 1990 period, basically the tetanus is the for the yeah. in the children case, yes, yeah. that is it. Right. So, so, so we are providing those vaccines, but on paid basis. Not so. Initially, when we started this project, government was supplying those medicine uh, vaccines free to us, but then for some reason they have stopped it. So that's why we are providing. But then we have introduced more vaccines like typhoid is one vaccine. Typhoid is very common in that area. So we have introduced typhoid, we are introducing chicken pox, we are introducing two vaccines, uh, we are introducing hepatitis A vaccine. So these are hepatitis A and typhoid are all waterborne diseases. So they they will be taking care of the bunch of you say it's water? Sorry. Uh, when you say safe water, provide a provision of safe water. Yes. Do you do any treatment or you So we have RO plant, we have RO machines, yes. So it's the 1000 LPH RO machine which is installed for the village and we provide them with water. And uh, you are uh, maintaining your TV and all Everything. That. So we do the uh, water uh, the product water test every month. Mm -hmm. And it is basically done by the third party so we don't do the tests internally. It is done by other party. So we do the water test every month. So what happens is that patients come in, they get the vaccine, they get the treatment, they come back to the village and they get the vaccine and they get the treatment. Mm -hmm. Sir, what is the situation in the village right now? Is there any problem? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, mobile based screening in diabetes, basically diabetes, uh, from diabetes point of view, the screening requires only the blood sugar and the basic parameters like your height, weight, BMI and uh, your uh, baseline. So, in that case, we have, what I talked about the last mile in which we have a relay health person. So, she is a trained nurse, so they will visit the household in that village and they will carry a device with them, so they will screen them. It is much more uh, expanded in the internet part because we have a lot of uh, products and it's attached to the sorry, it is attached to the tablet and online server. Sunita, I have a question to the topic of water. You yeah. referred that you are supplying uh, 20 liters per day for about one and a half dollars. Right. Uh, so, about 80 rupees uh, for 20 liters per day for a month translates to about 13 paisa per liter. Correct okay. me if I'm wrong. 
So at 13 paisa per liter, is it sustainable uh, on a business uh, model to, uh, as a, you are able to recover your costs at 13 paisa per liter? Yes. Uh, given the fundamental assumption that we are buying with, uh, bottled water at about 12 rupees per liter uh, in the urban city. So you are finding it uh, financially viable? Financially, yes. yes. It's very much profitable. On an average, our water point <laughs> usually breaks even around eight months to one year of time uh, and uh, a customer base of around 200 to 250 customer base uh, makes it pretty good. Uh, okay. The, re so the reason I was asking a question uh, was, uh, we are trying, I'm part of ICC bank, we are trying to do some pilots to uh, find appropriate technologies for treating water mm -hmm. which is arsenic and fluoride infested. Mm -hmm. So is your RO plant able to take care of arsenic and fluoride treatment or is it uh, a, a place where these problems don't exist? No, no, it, uh, uh, Brinda is full of these problems. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 the, that city, and they banned all, you know, this private, you know, water, uh, these things. They said, you prove it to us that your quality is better than us, and when they are only selling for two cents per gallon, <coughs> so they banned the Grand Rapids, no private, uh, in all that 